Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. We are going to discuss module 57. In the last module, we revisited the raw pointers and discussed how to deal with objects through raw pointers. And uh, we have in a way uh, taken a look again at all the different uh, problems that raw pointers cause in terms of managing the dynamic resources, which cause the safety issues as well as memory leak issues in C as well as C++ programs. Now, we introduced uh, the concept of uh, smart pointers with the typical interface uh, and use and discussed about some of the policies. We will uh, continue on that and uh, uh, complete on the ownership policies and uh, discuss other uh, policies and then take a look into the standard library support for C++ for smart pointers that are useful for the resource management. Uh, these are the contents will be outlined will be available on the left. Now, before we uh, start a discussion today, just um, let me quickly take a do a recap of what we have done the key points. The first is smart pointer is a C++ object and it stores pointers to dynamically allocated objects. right? So, it improves the raw pointers by implementing various strategies in its constructors, destructor, copy and uh, move assignments, uh, dereferencing operators and so, so on, but grossly mimics the raw pointer syntax and semantics. The main uh, highlights are that uh, smart pointers disallow unwanted operations like address arithmetic which is which is the you know one of the biggest uh, problem area for bugs. It uh, allows uh, lifetime management by uh, managing the dynamically created objects according to uh, the protocol of the static objects which the smart pointers are helps in concurrency control and supports uh, resource acquisition is initialization and resource release is destruction idioms which help really the resource management. So, this is the interface uh, we had seen the constructor must be explicit. So, that you cannot convert uh, raw pointers implicitly we have copy constructor uh, copy assignment operator, but most importantly you have overloaded uh, unary uh, operator start dereferencing and indirection operators. And we looked at the basic charter of uh, things that uh, the smartness that the smart pointers must have primarily being that uh, it will either uh, point to a valid object or it will be null. It will not be able to point to an invalid object and it once it is deleted the object that is being pointed to or managed by this smart pointer must also be uh, deleted. right? So, uh, and then there are many others like it must be useful with the existing code thread safe, exception safe and so on and so forth. And we have looked at uh, the storage policies and some of the ownership policies. In terms of the ownership policy, we have learned uh, two basic types of ownership that is there could be exclusive ownership wherein a smart pointer owns an object a managed object in an exclusive manner. So, that if it is copied to another smart pointer then that particular ownership will get transferred to the new copy and this pointer will become null. So, this is exclusive ownership and naturally if you delete an uh, exclusive ownership smart pointer then the pointy object will also get destroyed. The other is a shared uh, ownership policy where multiple smart pointers can uh, manage or can point to the same uh, object and uh, so when you copy a reference count goes up when you delete the reference count goes down and when the reference count becomes 0 then that managed object is deleted right. 
So, in different uh, constructor, copy constructor and operators, copy operators are where these strategies are implemented and we saw a variety of different uh, possible strategies for implementing the particularly the shared ownership policy. Now, moving on from this on the ownership policy, uh, exclusive ownership is fine. So, when you have uh, only one uh, pointer that can point to an object like uh, say in a, in, a, in a singular linked list and so on, then you do not have a problem. But when you have shared uh, policy, when you have more than one pointer can point to the same object, then there comes a question of uh, circular reference or cyclic reference. The idea is simple, if I have an object which is pointing to another object. Now, if this object also points back here, now the question is if this has a smart pointer pointing to the object uh, A has a smart pointer pointing to B, object B has a smart pointer pointing to A. Now, if I try to delete object uh, A, then I cannot do that because I it is pointing to a valid object, the reference count is more than 1. I cannot delete B either because it is pointing to a valid object A, the reference count is 1. So, if, if there is a circularity, then I will not be able to delete any of these objects. So, these objects will remain there forever and a resource leak will happen. So, circularity of references cause a uh, problem in terms of the shared ownership policy. For example, think about this, you will not be able to delete any of these uh, 5 nodes, because there is always more than one we are, which are being pointed to. So, to take care of that, the, what is done is, we introduce 2 different types of pointers, one is called a shared pointer. For example, if I, if I uh, can uh, show you with, uh, with certain colors, let us say this is a shared pointer, this is a shared pointer this is a shared pointer and say so this is a shared pointer. A shared pointer is basically a pointer of the data structure which hold the structure together. The other ones we consider to be a different kind of pointer which just makes references back to some node, but is really not owning the node. So, smart pointer owns the other type we call it the weak pointer, unsmart is not a good word, observes. Is some smart pointer holding this object or not? But the fact that a weak pointer is pointing to an object is not a restriction for that object to be deleted. Whereas, if a smart pointer is pointing to it, then that object cannot be deleted. So, this is this is the simple trick that is uh, introduced. So, often uh, the uh, smart pointers or the strong pointers are really the links in the data structure, whereas the weak pointers are uh, primarily the algorithm pointers. No, they just uh, observe, they just keep track. Now, so how do you keep track of uh, whether there is a smart pointer or there is a uh, whether there is a you know strong pointer or whether there is a weak pointer and so on. So, instead of uh, one reference count which we were having earlier, now you have 2 reference counts, right? a strong pointer count and a weak pointer count. So, strong pointer count tells you that how many pointers are owning this object. right? So, I can have an object, I can have multiple smart pointers which are pointing to it, sp2 multiple smart pointers are pointing to that. So, as long as all of these smart pointers exist, at least up to one smart pointer exists, this object cannot be deleted. I also have weak pointers, I also have weak pointers pointing here. The weak pointer does not own, it is just keeping track whether there are smart pointers which are pointing here. So, a weak pointer, but it, it is pointing to the object in a certain way. 
Now, but since it is not owning it, even when a weak pointer is pointing to an object, that object can be deleted. And because it is pointing to the object, it can serve as the purpose of referring to that object. I can use this pointer and in some way there are restrictions, but in some way I can access that object. This is the basic idea. Right? I am not going into the details of the implementation, but this uh, basic idea if you keep in mind that would be fine. The next is, uh, uh, so we have the storage policy, we have the ownership policy. The next is what is known as the conversion policy. Conversion policy says uh, something very simple. If I have a smart pointer, so what do I have? I, I have a smart pointer. So basically an object which inside will have a raw pointer which is actually holding that object. Right? This is the structure. Now if I have a smart pointer, then can I convert it to its raw pointer? For example, just look at something is some class. So, I have defined a function fun which takes a raw pointer to something and I have defined a smart pointer S p through this allocation which is a smart pointer to something. Now, the question is, is this call allowed? If you look at the type, the type of the formal parameter is something star, whereas that is pointed to something, whereas the type of the fun is a smart pointer that is it is an object where it is a C++ uh, object where the dereferencing and indirection operators have been overloaded. The question is should this be allowed? As such this should not be allowed because they are of different types. So, this can be allowed provided a smart pointer by default can be converted to a raw pointer. Right? So, how will that happen? That means, there has to be a conversion. Right? Now, since it is uh, to be converted to a raw pointer which is a built in type, we cannot make use of the constructor of the built in type to do this conversion as we have learnt. So, if this has to be allowed then the smart pointer class has to provide a conversion operator. So, say it provides an operator t star where t is the. So, if this operator is also provided then what will happen? If I pass it a pointer of uh, uh, pointer S p of the smart pointer t type, then it will automatically return the internal point t, return this internal point t and give me the raw pointer. Okay. So, if I provide this, then this conversion will be allowed. Okay. That is that's good, but there is a big problem. The problem is suppose I have a smart pointer S p okay. and suppose I have written delete sp right? you know it's a it's a mental overhead because pointers we delete now delete sp should not be allowed because sp actually is an object it is not a dynamically allocated pointer on which you can call the delete operator so delete sp should have given me a compilation error but it will not you will compile fine because the compiler finds that sp is of type smart pointer which has a conversion to the raw pointer. So, it will do the conversion get the raw pointer and delete that something which is semantically wrong and compiler should have given an error does not give an error. Right. So, the conversion implicit conversion is not a good idea there are different there could be different ways of uh, you know providing the conversion and then you know blocking it for example. Uh, you, you know we have learnt about explicit we have learnt about explicit keyword for uh, making the conversion operators explicit you could use that if you use that then again you will not be this will not this problem will go away because this will not compile so this will also not compile so you will you will then have to write uh, static cast you know 
T star then or something star then S p right because it is explicit you so this uh, syntactic beauty will in any case go away or you could uh, if you are uh, working in uh, C plus uh, plus zero three. Uh, where you do not have the explicit keyword. The other uh, trick or hack that you can do that you can provide another operator uh, conversion operator void star. If you do not have explicit is the preferred way. If you do not have you can alongside operator t star you can provide operator void star. Then also what will happen the implicit conversion will not be allowed because these two overloads will not be resolvable. Right. So, the compiler will say that I do not know only explicit ones will be. So, whether I do it by this mechanism of C plus plus 11 or I do it by this hack of C plus plus 0 3, I have to to avoid such risks I have to use uh, an explicit conversion in this way. Now, so the language uh, committee while discussing uh, deliberated over that and said that if this has to be done then it is better that the user says that I am doing it. So, it does not provide any conversion operator smart pointers in the standard library does not have a conversion operator rather it gives you a function member function get by which you can get this raw pointer simple. So, if you have to write this you will have to write this as fun s p dot get and that will get you the raw pointer of course, this is this is uh, much less uh, you know cumbersome looking and less typing compared to the static cast right. So, this is what is available for the unique pointer and the and the shared pointer. This next question is uh, null test policy uh, we often check uh, pointers for null. So, given a smart pointer given a smart pointer would I be able to do these checks this is we check if it is not null if it is null if it is equal to explicit check and so on. These are very common way of checking actually since you do not have an implicit conversion these will not be possible right because obviously these are objects. So, they do not have a, a mappable operator. So, one way you can make it work is you can overload the negation operator and say so, the negation operator checks for equality of the pointer to 0. If you do that then naturally this will work you know because the negation the test 2 will work test 1 will still not work because the negation operator does not get uh, invoked. So, test 1 you will have to write it in a peculiar way like if bang bang s p. So, negation twice it makes it uh, and test 3 you cannot make it pass. So, again through consideration what the um, uh, language committee has provided instead of doing all this it has provided a explicit conversion to bool which is a very specific one which is explicit operator bool and you know that uh, if you have an explicit conversion to bool then in the context of such tests the explicitness is not considered this is particularly for operator bool. If you do not remember please go back and see uh, the discussion on the explicit. So, explicit operator bool is provided in unique pointer and shared pointer. So, that all of these three tests will work. So, that is the null test policy. So, having said that now let us uh, quickly take a look at uh, what are the different uh, uh, smart pointers we have there are four kinds unique pointer which is exclusive ownership destructive copy shared pointer which shares the ownership weak pointer which refers to an object managed by some other shared pointer. So, that the cyclic reference can be avoided. So, these are the three smart pointers which are critical for the study. You do have a pointer smart pointer called auto pointer which exists in C plus plus 0 3, but so we will we have included it, but uh, it is deprecated in uh, C plus plus 11 and in C plus plus uh, 17 this has been completely removed. So, unless you are uh, restricted to use C plus plus 0 3 only do not use the auto PTR all of these are available in the memory component of the library. 
So, what is a unique uh, pointer? A unique pointer is simply that at any point of time it holds a single object if you copy the ownership transfers as simple as that. You have a get to get the raw pointer if you destroy the unique pointer then that object being managed also get destroyed. If you assign it to other unique pointer the object uh, gets transferred. If you reset the unique pointer then also the object is destroyed. So, these are the different uh, features the unique pointer has. One special thing about unique pointer is unique pointer can also be created to an array of uh, dynamically allocated array of objects. Right? So, it can be to a single object or a dynamically created array of objects. It has a complete uh, exception safety um, and the, all the kinds of uh, assignment and copy problem, exception path problems we had talked of, they will get solved by this use of unique pointer. It is used to pass parameters to functions to get uh, values uh, returned from function and uh, you know several containers use uh, unique pointer like in like I have a vector. So, in a vector as you have we have discussed that it is an kind of an array of pointers where the you know, but every element is uh, held uh, through through a pointer. So, those are all can be unique pointer because obviously, every pointer will hold only unique element that exists there. So, most uh, useful kind of pointer here I have given a simple uh, program which you can uh, execute and see that the basic behavior of ownership uh, transfer uh, is happening properly. So, uh, for example, you create a unique pointer, uh, you can you can in, in instead of writing this, I am sorry, instead of writing this, you can also write this new foo and use that to initialize the unique pointer. That is the C plus uh, plus 11 st style of uh, uh, initializing the unique pointer. C plus plus 14 gives you something nice, it gives you a uh, STL function make unique and you can create unique uh, pointer through that and you should actually always use that. So, P 1 is a unique pointer to a to an instance of uh, foo. So, if you do foo pointer uh, bar uh, then it will uh, execute this uh, bar function. If you uh, move this uh, uh, unique pointer P 1 to another unique pointer P 2 you can see std move for the purpose of making sure that you take the move semantics. If you do that move then certainly the ownership will go to P 2. So, now if you uh, do star of this in f you will get this right because it now owns that uh, that foo object right. If you make an assignment the ownership will come back and so on right. So, you can you can trace through this and Next is the shared pointer that is the most interesting the shared pointer is a pointer which can where multiple pointers can point to the same object in a shared collaborative manner. And the object managed object gets destroyed only when the last shared pointer pointing to that is being destroyed otherwise as long as there are shared pointers remaining who are managing that object other shared pointers can be destroyed without destroying this object. Of course, you can uh, 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 if you if you assign also the ownership gets transferred ownership get copied basically not transferred here ownership get copied. So, the reference count will increase if you reset then it will get released right. You can uh, get the we mentioned it you can get the raw pointer using get and at any point of time you can do a use count to know how many smart pointers are pointing to this object that is you can get the value of the reference count right. So, that is uh, that is a very nice uh, design again another sample program which shows you various different ways of dealing with the shared pointer shared smart pointer. Like unique here you have other STL function make shared to construct a shared smart pointer. Now, these whether it you are doing make unique or you are doing make shared 
these basically follow this R A I I, because you can see that you have not even done a new, you did not even require to do new that is done from inside this. right? So, when you do not even get to see the raw pointer that got created in the dynamic allocation. So, the difference you, 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 you could have uh, done for example, here you could have uh, written like this p 1 nu and uh, int right. You could have written this. If you are doing this then nu int which is an r value a temporary object is at least you can see that that is that is the identity of the raw pointer and then that raw pointer is being owned by p 1 which is the shared smart pointer, but if you do make shared then you do not even get to see that. So, resource is acquired and immediately initialized into the shared smart pointer. Right? So, you can have this like you do in a typical raw pointer way you can set a value, you can print that value, you can see how many are, uh, are pointing to this right now it is 1 you do a copy construction of the shared pointer the count will go up to 2 both of them both in p 1 as well as in p 2 right. And now, 2 pointers are pointing. So, if you take sh look shared ca count for uh, p 1 as well as shared count for p 2 both will uh, look to be 2 because the count is of the total number of shared pointers that are pointing to this object right and so on so forth. If you if you do reset, then uh, the object will go, use count will fall back to 0. You can reset and in that process set a new object, not a very good idea though, and so on and so forth. Right? So, that is a shared pointer use. Coming to the weak pointer, weak pointers are you cannot, weak pointers do not exist by themselves. Weak pointers can be, it is a non owning reference, it is an observation reference. So, they can observe objects managed by other shared pointers. Right? So, the weak pointer directly cannot access the object, you can take a weak pointer and from that you can convert to a shared pointer and access the object. Right? And for that a particular function is given it is called lock. If you do lock on a weak pointer it gives you a shared pointer and you can use that shared pointer. Like in uh, shared pointer weak pointer also will give you the count use count which is the number of weak pointers uh, pointing to this object. If uh, no weak pointer if the no sorry if the object is uh, no more existing then the weak pointer uh, which uh, we can call the um, uh, expired function and see that if there is the object is existing or the object has already expired. So, these are the different uh, operations uh, you can do here is a, a simple example. So, we have a uh, shared uh, we, we have a weak pointer and we have uh, done a lock. So, from that by that lock we have got a shared pointer by doing a lock the type is set by auto and we can make use of that because with the weak pointer we cannot directly access the object. Then uh, we have created something from make auto uh, make shared and uh, then we have assigned that to a weak pointer right. So, weak pointer also observes it and if you uh, print f it will be able to print f, but once you come out of the scope naturally this will get deleted because it is an automatic scope. So, once this shared pointer gets deleted obviously, the managed object will also get deleted. So, the, the weak pointer will find that it has actually expired. So, now when you call f this lock will fail and you will print that the weak pointer is expired. So, that is the that is the basic logic. You have an auto pointer, this is historical legacy of uh, C 03, which is somewhat like the unique pointer, but it does not have most of the 
uh, facilities of uh, that, but uh, it could just uh, you know hold a unique uh, objects and the um, the ownership gets transferred by uh, assignment, and uh, you could extract the raw pointer by doing get, do reset, release, and so on. And but most of the other operations like uh, checking. Uh, for you know null test and all that are not available right so it's uh, it's not something which is advised to be used at all in c++ onwards now here uh, as i usually do i have given a summary one single site uh, chart of what are the different i mean these are not an exhaustive one but these are the major member functions that you have and which member function is available in which kind of smart pointer and what does it mean. So, you can study this and you should be able to understand why you have. So, for example, you can you can see that the reason you do not use auto is most of these members are not available in auto. Whereas, some are uh, available in some for example, use count is not available in unique PTR because in unique PTR the use count is always one you know that is not it is an exclusive ownership, so it is not much meaning. So, this is a quick reference that you can have. Uh, okay. So, finally, we end with an example to see we had talked about uh, having shared pointer and weak pointer to break the circularity. So, let us see did we it, have we been able to do that. So, I have uh, given here a very simple you know um, node design for a binary tree. So, you have a node, you have two child pointers to others and each child pointer is has a parent pointer. The child pointers are smart pointers left child and right child whereas, the parent pointer is a weak pointer. So, that is how you break the cycle right? and then you can uh, make a root set uh, the child node of the left child of the root, right child of the root, set the parents of both the children, and you can just uh, create another shared pointer to the root. And using that uh, shared pointer, you can check the values. This is all that gets uh, displayed. And finally, you are not doing any delete or anything, but as the program ends at this point naturally these shared uh, pointers that have been created goes out of scope and therefore, they are automatically deleted and the corresponding nodes are deleted and therefore, the destructor prints these messages. Just as a final check, just as a final check that uh, this indeed is a solution you needed, change this weak pointer to shared PTR. If you do that, the circularity will come back, try that and you will see that these messages will not come. Because now at this point, even though these uh, three objects are going out of scope, each one of them has a reference count which is not 0. So, it cannot be destroyed. Right? So, that is the that is a basic uh, story. Uh, finally, I, mean, I would recommend that you study the chapter 4 of Effective Modern C++, the book by Scott Mayer, which is an excellent discussion on smart pointers, particularly in modern C++. And there are four items which make four recommendations and that you must uh, always follow. Use unique pointer for exclusive ownership, use shared pointer for sharedly owned resource management, use weak pointer when shared pointers can dangle and make use of make unique and make shared. Do not use new along with these pointers. Thank you very much. Uh, we have discussed about the different policies and introduced the smart pointers in C++ standard library. Thank you very much for your attention and we will meet in the next module.